Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church and Schools. We're continuing on our sermon series. If you remember, uh, VBS is going to be coming up soon, and uh, their theme is victory. And so we have been uh, looking at uh, each of the days of Vacation Bible School uh, with the theme victory. And so a couple weeks ago, we started with uh, victory through courage. Uh, last week was victory through obedience as we hung out with Gideon, and then uh, this week is victory through faith, and we're going to be hanging out and watching David and Goliath as, they, uh, as we go through that particular account, and what is it that we can learn from that uh, that uh, applies to our lives, so look forward to sharing that uh, with you. Uh, just a couple uh, announcements uh, for you, first of all, uh, we are thankful that you are joining us on uh, 1400 um, AM with uh, Moment with God. I'm glad if you are joining us and are able to listen in. Also, if you're joining us on, online, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you also to our worship service. Um, I just wanted to give you uh, just uh, a personal thing. A um, couple days ago, I was folding clothes, and I didn't realize that fabric makes noise. And uh, so I heard the fabric of the clothing for the first time, so uh, I didn't realize that. And uh, I was trying to figure out, what, what's that noise that I was folding, and I realized there was the clothing. I didn't know that. So uh, it's a new sound that I rejoice in, uh, like the other, a couple weeks ago when I heard the raindrops for the first time. So I uh, just wanted to share that uh, with you. Um, because my hearing is getting better, and I'm getting more comfortable uh, I'm going to be starting visits again this month. Uh, wasn't feeling very comfortable yet going, uh, going out to visit the shut-in and, uh, and those at Friendship Haven just because I wasn't ready yet. Uh, but I am uh, feeling more comfortable with that. So the month of June, I'll be uh, doing a visit. So just wanted to let you know in case anybody uh, is wondering about that, uh, I'll be starting to do that this month uh, now that I'm feeling more comfortable with my, uh, with my hearing. So thank you for all your support and encouragement during that time. Uh, the sermon series that we're going to be starting in July, it called You Asked For It. So there's a box that's in the back of the sanctuary um, that uh, had that um, sign on there, You Asked For It. There are slips of paper there that you can write out. Uh, what is it that you would like for the pastor to preach on? Uh, maybe there's a certain topic that you would like the pastor to preach on. You can write out whatever that topic is and put that in a box and we'll be formulating um, a uh, six-week sermon series based on uh, those. Uh, it might go longer, depending on how many uh, topics I get. So I uh, just wanted to let you know that that's an opportunity for, uh, for you. As I mentioned also, uh, BBS in camp is coming up on the 20th through the 24th. Uh, that's for a four-year-old up to fifth grade. Uh, you can go online. I believe we have 77 kids already registered. Uh, so um, you can go, uh, jump online and, uh, and go ahead and uh, sign up. Uh, we are also in need of youth volunteers, uh, so uh, be sure to, uh, uh, to, uh, to let us know if you are interested in being able to help out. Uh, we are in need of 120 paper towel rolls. We already have some that have been brought in. Uh, so if you have some paper towel rolls that are at home, uh, be sure to bring those in and drop them off at the, uh, the VBS table. Uh, we're going to be using those with our crafts. If you're interested in helping out with the snacks for uh, VBS, um, there is a tree that's on one of the tables. It's a little tree that has different uh, slips of paper on it. And uh, you could take one of those slips of paper and it'll have a suggestion on what snack to bring in. You could just go ahead and get that and bring that, uh, bring that in. We're thankful uh, for, uh, for those donations as we're seeking to provide uh, snacks for the, uh, for the kids. Also, last week I had shown everyone the T-shirts that uh, the volunteers are going to be wearing. And so starting this weekend, you can sign those T-shirts. Uh, just put your name on it, on uh, as many T-shirts as you want that are there. Uh, there's an opportunity for us to let our volunteers know that we at the congregation are praying for them uh, and uh, that they are covered in prayer. We're going to be praying for them in our prayer to the church uh, this morning. So it's an opportunity for them to know that, hey, we've got your back and uh, that we are praying for you. So please keep that in mind. 
Last, lastly, the garage sale uh, had been um, uh, successful over these last couple days. And uh, so today, you've got a deal. You can go in and you can fill up a whole bag with as much as you can get in the bag and only pay a dollar. And so it's a dollar a bag day. So that will happen right after the 1030 service. That will be open. You can go in. You can gather all the stuff. I know, Daryl, you need something over there. And uh, um, Roger, you need something over there, too. So you guys can go over there, and you can uh, go ahead and uh, get uh, all you can fit into a bag for a dollar. Keep that in mind. So we are thankful to be in worship together and together, and let's wave to each other as we're thankful to be part of the body of Christ together in worship. And we begin with our opening hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. We'll be standing for verse 4. This morning, we'll be following divine service setting three as we recognize that today is the day of Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord. And he forgave me of my sin. We take a moment of silence to reflect on God's word and for self-examination. O Almighty God and Merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you in the realms of mercy, and for the sake of all the innocent that are suffering and death. Be 
My friends, upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue on to sing the Kyrie and the Gloria in Excelsis. on high. Lord be with you. Thank you. Let us pray. O God, who gave your Holy Spirit to the apostles, grant us that same Spirit that we may live in faith and abide in peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading for our time together this morning comes to us from the Old Testament from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And here we see the account of David and Goliath, which will be the main subject of our message for this morning. Now the Philistines gathered their army for battle. And they were gathered at Sokoa, which belonged to Judah, and encamped between Sokoa and Azekah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And his shield-bearer went before him, 
he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself, then let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So then Saul clothed David with his armor, He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. And so David put them off. And then David took his staff in his hand and chose five small smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the bird of the air and to the beast of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistine this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from Uh, the New Testament from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And uh, this is known as the great faith chapter. In this particular chapter, faith is defined for us, and also examples of those who are faithful are given. The Hebrew writer writes, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. 
by faith. Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundation, whose designer and builder is God. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdom, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised when God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, we have the opportunity for the children's message. And I've noticed, I think, that we only have one here that would uh, come up. And uh, so, uh, Blakely, do you want to come up or no? Okay. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I want you guys to know, since I put the children's message together, I want you guys to know what I was going to talk about. And so David and Goliath, oftentimes we think about um, uh, David and Goliath in a certain way that I'm going to mention in the message. But what I wanted to do with the kids is I was going to have one of them uh, stand up and hold a book out with their hands. And I'm going to ask them, is this, uh, is this pretty easy to do? And they probably would say yes. And then after that, I would say, well, what if I were to add another four books on top of that? Would that be easy for you to hold? And they might have said yes. They might have said, yeah, I can, but maybe it's getting harder. And then I, then I would have gotten another three books put that on top, and I'm pretty sure that that would have been hard. Blakely, do you think that you could handle this many? You think so? But it probably wouldn't be very easy, would it? It wouldn't be easy. But God also gives us a gift. He gives the gift of each other. And so what I would have done would have some other kids come up and hold the book with her so that it would have been easier. Blakely, do you think that if other people were helping you to hold these books, it would be easy, easy for you to hold? Yeah, well, yep, it would be. And that's the point of um, David and Goliath. And we'll be talking about that in the method. The point is, is that the opportunity that God provides himself to help us when we are facing those Goliaths in life. So that is, uh, that's the message uh, for us. So let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray. <clears throat> Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for not leaving me alone, but being with me and helping me as I go about life, facing my giant. I know that you fight for me and that you help me. We pray this in your name. Amen. At this time, uh, won't you uh, join me as we move into uh, the Alleluia and verse in honor of the gospel. 
You can stand with me if you are able. Point in St. John, the third chapter. Today we recognize that it's Pentecost Sunday, and in Pentecost, uh, the disciples, and then ultimately each and every one of us, have been clothed with the Holy Spirit through the hearing of the Word and also through our baptism. And here in our reading from John chapter 3, we see how important that faith is that has been given to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believed in him is not condemned. But whoever did not believe, it condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light had come into the world, and the people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and did not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it, might be, so it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out by God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time, we have the opportunity for us to confess our faith. Uh, and we use the words of the nine seen creed. So at the body of Christ, together we confess. I believe in We continue on with our hymn of the day. It's hymn 728, How Firm a Foundation. We'll be singing the first three verses. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our risen Lord, our Savior Jesus, our victorious King. Grace and mercy to you in the sanctuary, to those that are joining us online, and to those that are listening to the radio. In this corner stands a man who is 10 feet tall. He's built like a tank. He's covered in armor from head to toe. His shield is so big that it's somebody else's day job just to carry it. A javelin the size of a flagpole. He's ugly and he's mean and he is loud and obnoxious. He is trash talking. There is Goliath. And in this corner is David. Little harp strumming David. Just a big stick and a childhood sling in hand and a pocket full of a few smooth stones. He's not even a man yet, the youngest of eight sons. He's humble, he's meek, he's inexperienced. I think one of the reasons why we love the story of David and Goliath is because of the extreme contrast between the two. We love the idea of an underdog taking down the big guy. Because if David can win this one, then maybe I might just have a shot too. No wonder we love the story of David and Goliath. So this morning, I ask you, what giants, what Goliaths are you facing are you up against this morning? Maybe it's one of your family members that's hanging around the wrong crowd, and no matter what you say, you're just not getting through. Or maybe it's the increased living expenses that we're dealing with, but you're living on a fixed income, and it's making it tough to get ends to meet. Or maybe you find yourself going through a life change where you know that you have to downsize, and that means having to let go of all that you had worked for. Or maybe getting the call from the doctor, and it's not good news. Or maybe what's concerning you the most is our nation becoming more and more divided. What is your giant? What is the Goliath that you are facing? Because whatever it is, we seem to need these types of stories, don't we? These types of David and Goliath accounts to inspire us, to encourage us, and even to empower us. Otherwise, it might just be tempting to give up and to walk away and just let them win. And you know, from my experience, as we've been looking at David and Goliath, that's how typically we look at that story. It's very easy for us to want to talk about how with God on our side, we can even face our biggest bullies. No matter how giant, no matter how mean, no matter how ugly they are. When it comes to faith, all we need is a mustard seed and we can move mountains. All we need is a big stick and just one small smooth stone and we can topple a giant. In fact, I was even tempted to almost preach something like that today, but I can't help but wonder, is the account of David and Goliath, is that what that account is all about? 
Too many times, you see, we, we try to be like David. And we try to have enough faith so that we can conquer the giant. But what happened when that giant, when that Goliath conquers us? Does that mean that we don't have enough faith? What does it mean? Well, here's what I mean. Cheryl had grown up being told by her parents and teachers that she could do anything that she set her mind to. And over the years, with each accomplishment, she, she came to believe that that certainly is true. There was that difficult scholarship she almost didn't get. But with her GPA and with her extracurricular, she was able to attend a school of her choice at half the cost. Then after school, her first job, she ended up working for the boss from hell. And she wasn't sure if he, she was going to be able to handle working with him any longer. But she, thought, she decided to hang in there, and doing her best, she found herself then sitting in his office and in his chair behind his desk with her name on his old door. And when it seemed like that her marriage was falling apart, she was determined to drag in her husband to the counselor's office, and now she and Frank have never been closer. So you can imagine her attitude when she was told that she had stage two brain tumor. I'm going to beat this thing, she said. I'm going to beat this, that she told her family and friend with genuine confidence. Even after her doctor told her that the survival rate of her surgery would be less than 50%. She still laughed in the face of her Goliath. So a couple weeks went by, she had her surgery. A couple weeks after that, she was doing great. It seemed like that she had overcome her Goliath that she was on her feet, she was living life as much as she had before, and it seemed like that it was her positive attitude and her firm resolve that served her well. But not even a year later, she started complaining about headaches. She noticed that her balance and coordination was slipping, and she even was having trouble with her vision, and immediately she knew that this was not good. So right away she went to the doctor, and the doctor confirmed that it wasn't good news. The cancer's back, the doctor said, and it seemed to be in an area that is inoperable. And so for the first time, Cheryl felt power, para, uh, paralyzed and powerless. And she came to that sober realization that there really are some giants that are just too big for her. That not even her big stick and stone had a chance against it. So what do you think about the David and Goliath story now? You see, if you think about the time of David and Goliath, David may have won the battle, but he and his people would eventually lose the war. The time would come when David would die, along with the rest of those that were gathered in our story. And even though the nation of Israel was safe for that day and for a time, there eventually would be a day when the kingdom would fall to its enemies. The temple would be plundered and destroyed and burned. The holy city of Jerusalem would be left in ruins. And as it turns out, the David and Goliath story can only go so far. There are some giants that are just too big. They're too much for us to handle on our own. When you think about facing giants like Satan and sin, and death, and hell. 
We come to find out that David is not our Savior. We come to find out that, you know what, we're not very good saviors ourselves. And if we're honest with ourselves, we actually are more like the scared and frightened Israel that was standing off to the side up in the mountains looking for someone else to fight for them. But as we despair, as we lift our hands up almost in defeat, we look out. And on the battlefield of life, we catch another David. He's known as the son of David, stepping out in front of us and onto the battlefield. And he's like a shepherd boy, but even more, he's known as the good shepherd, the one who laid down his life for the sake of the sheep. He laid down his life for our sake. And he's brave, and he's bold, and he's willing to face those Goliath, knowing that God is on his side fighting for him. And he doesn't even enter the fray with armor or great weapon, but like David, he comes with practically next to nothing. He comes with something sort of like a big stick and stones. You see, he's got a big wooden cross with his name on it and a rocky tomb. But keep watch and see what he does on the battlefield. He drives that wooden cross right into the heads of those giants of Satan and sin and death and hell. Why do I say that? Because he plants his cross on a hill called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Of the skull. And because of that, those giants, those big giants, cannot hurt us anymore. Sin? It's covered by the blood of Jesus. Death? It died with Jesus on the cross. And immortality had risen for us with Jesus from the grave. Hell? It was shut up when the stone was rolled away from the grave. And heaven's gate was opened up for each and every one of us. So those feelings of regret, those feelings of making mistakes and dealing with hurts and guilt. Our giants are undone. They are defeated. They are no more. Jesus, the Son of David, the Son of God, is our Messiah. And when we are on the battlefield of life, we are called to trust in Jesus. For He is the one that gives us what we need to fight the Goliath that we face. We don't have to face them alone. Now, wouldn't you agree, if you think about those big giants of Satan and sin and death and hell, that suddenly the giants that we might be facing in life, they don't seem so giant anymore. In fact, they seem pretty small pretty manageable. And that can happen when, when God brings down the biggest of the giants for us. The ones that we can't handle. If these really big ones are fallen, then the other ones just don't look so mean anymore. And my guess is, is that's why David was able to face Goliath in the first place. Because, you see, he had seen what God had done to his, for his people already. How he had brought his people out of Egypt. How he had established them as a nation. And had continued to, to, to deliver them from the hand of their enemies. But better yet, David knew that if God kept all of these promises, he would keep the promise of fighting there alongside him on the battlefield. And because of that, Goliath didn't seem so big 
anymore. Because after all, we can hold our heads up high because we know that we win in the end. When Cheryl first got the news from her doctor that the cancer was back and without a cure, everyone who knew Cheryl feared for her. They knew that she was a real go-getter, that she was a real fighter, and now there was no fight left for her. And they were worried about what would happen to her. But boy, were they surprised. Because Cheryl was even more Cheryl than before. And in fact, her family and friend would now learn the secret to her confidence, even in the midst of her challenge. It wasn't just an American, I can do anything kind of attitude. But no, it was because she had a trust in her Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, for Cheryl... There was no giant that was too big. You see, there's no giant that's too big for us. Not when we have all we need. And that is a big stick, which is the cross of Christ, and a stone, which is his empty tomb. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all of our understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue on with the last few verses of our hymn. <coughs> this moment in response to hearing the message we have the opportunity for us to sing the offertory won't you stand with me as we sing At this time, we have the opportunity to give thanks to God through our tithes and offerings, thanking Him for all that He has given us. You may be seated.
Would you stand with me in prayer? Great, your Father, our eyes look to you and you give us what we need at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. With praise and thanksgiving, we give back a portion of that which you have given us. We ask that you would look favorably upon our gifts and that they would be used as you see fit to best proclaim your life-saving good news to those who have not yet heard as we seek to glorify you and make an impact in the community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Abba, Father, we thank you that you have brought us forgiveness of sin through your Son, Jesus, and it's through him that we can come to you. You promise that you will hear our prayers, so we ask that you would remind us daily that you so much want to be a part of our lives. As we go through our lives, help us to remember that we have victory through faith as we focus on the strength you give us to overcome whatever difficulties we may be facing and the trust in your promised presence. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this Pentecost weekend, we are reminded that you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in it. Bless all parents, that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Be with our principal and our teachers, along with all educators, as they prepare for the next school year and may have opportunities to rest during the summer. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Father, we rejoice that you care for us so much that you would want us to pray to you, to share with you what is going on in our lives, the joys that we have, and the cares and concerns we carry in our hearts. We ask that you would be with those who are sick or in pain, especially those that we have on our hearts. Kathy McNeil, Glenn DeVries, Laura Dishler, Troy Hoyer, Barb Rather, Carol Stripling, Marion Wood, Penny Hoyer, Gary Anderson, Tom Redman, and those that we have on our hearts and our minds. Father, you know the needs of each of these people, and we ask that you would touch their minds, bodies, and hearts, that they may be restored to health and life. We ask that you would be with their family, that they continue to provide care and support during these difficult times. Allow for them to look to you in their times of struggle and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we also ask that you would sustain and comfort all those who mourn the death of loved ones so that they never lose sight of your heavenly land of promise. We pray for Mary Plaguey and her family as she grieved the loss of her son, Craig, we pray that you would comfort them with the certainty and the peace of your promise that because your son lived, we also will live. Grant each of us the faith daily to pray, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we lift up to you our preparation for VBS and all who will be involved. We pray to you for the teachers, the volunteers, and workers who will be serving. We pray for the children who will attend VBS and the families they represent. We ask that you would begin preparing their heart to respond to the good news they will hear at VBS, along with their physical safety and emotional well-being during the week. And we lift up to you those who are unchurched in our community who will join us for VBS. May this place be a place of welcome, service, and building relationship with everyone who enters your doors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy. All these we pray as we lift them into your hand, O Lord, for we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear us as we pray the prayer that your Son had taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our prayer.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. My friend, may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
stand with me if you are able. Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior both strengthen you now in your body and soul and unto life everlasting. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, that you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give each and every one of you his peace. Our closing hymn is one of my favorites. It's Children of the Heavenly Father, hymn 725. You may be seated. As you depart the sanctuary and you move on to the battlefield of life, remember that you're not alone, that God fights alongside you. Have a great week.